Welcome to the AI Atlanta High School Design Competition. Uh, I'm Bill Carpenter, the chapter president for AI Atlanta and uh, past regional director on the AI National Board. Uh, this project is very special to us uh, as a chapter. Uh, it's our way of giving back and encouraging students in the high schools and their teachers to think about design in a new and exciting way. And so I just uh, welcome everyone to this year's program. Uh, I think what's so exciting is that we're able to reach so many students, over a thousand students since the project started, and it's made such a big impact on the city as a whole, and many of these students go on to study design or architecture. So thank you and welcome. Hi, my name is Nata Soslavsky. I am a designer at the Preston Partnership, and I am most excited today to see all of the wonderful projects that these high school students have delivered to us and to see their design and how it affects their everyday thinking and how our critique of their thinking can really change the way we see the world. I'm Ed Bernard, Regional Vice President for Mark Sakubo and Associates. I am glad to be here and participating in this process with, that involves young people that are looking forward to participating in architecture. Uh, with that in mind, I am also uh, enjoying the process of working with my colleagues in AI. My name is Brian Bell. I'm uh, a principal at the firm called Buildings here in Atlanta and also a professor of practice at Georgia Institute of Technology the School of Architecture. Um, I'm looking for, when I see these projects, are what I'm looking for are the sparks of inspiration, really, that uh, students are, get very excited about and that may or may not result in a complete project, but that uh, you can tell that they really invested their, themselves in and are learning from. Hi, my name is Chris Welty. I'm an associate professor at Kennesaw State University where I teach in the architecture department. There I uh, coordinate the professional practice sequence and teach uh, fourth year comprehensive design and thesis. I'm really excited about the competition today because um, the uh, high school student design competition is one of the, the best uh, programs that Atlanta puts on and um, it's always really exciting to see the creativity and the effort and the work that students in high school put together, and we look forward to getting them in college. My name is Erica Garfinkel. I'm an architectural designer at Gensler, and I'm really looking forward to the creativity that these high school students can bring to their projects. My name is Brian Ward. I'm the design director of Niles Bolton Associates Architects, an architecture firm here in Atlanta, and I'm looking forward to seeing how these students are learning to draw and use design concepts. My name is uh, John Busby, a fellow in the American Institute of Architects. I've been in practice for over 50 years. I'm now retired. And uh, I, in the past, I have been very interested in architectural education uh, and promoting it. I've been very, uh, these high school competitions over the years have advanced uh, a great deal and I begin to see the, inter the in inclusion and the interpretation of digital presentations uh, which is now uh, the, the future of architecture. The students also provide good thought into their interpretation of this program and it gives me inspiration that the future of architecture is going to be exciting. My name is Anya Kahlo and I'm a co-chair for the high school student design competition. I also teach at College of Architecture in School of Industrial Design at Georgia Tech. I'm very excited to see all your imaginations unfold in this project. Hi, I'm Ann Gerandellis. Um, I am the undergraduate program coordinator for the School of Industrial Design in the College of Architecture at Georgia Tech. I've been working at Tech for 16 years and I am so excited today to see the different schemes that we've been looking through. Um, I'm fascinated that the program this year really invites students to look at the history of Atlanta and to understand how architecture can help to heal some of the wounds um, that have been created through um, the design of our spaces. And I can't wait for you to see the great ideas that they have. Hi, my name is Oliver Steffi. I'm with YKK AP America. We're this year's presenting sponsor for the AIA Atlanta High School Design Competition. When we got the call this year from AIA, we could think of no other way 
to help support the community, not only in the Atlanta metro area, but through the entire state of Georgia in working with AA Atlanta as a partner. We've been a partner of theirs for a number of years and are so impressed with what they've been able to do with the outreach that they've done, not only throughout Atlanta, but throughout the entire state. It's just been a wonderful partnership for us all these years and we're really excited about this year's competition. It is so wonderful to see the students' process on their boards. I love it because they begin the process in very different ways. Um, and I think the ways that help students in their process is when we see evidence of students going out to the site. Um, so for example, um, in the beginning design competition, students are going out to the site and they're walking and they're seeing what's happening in that space. And then in the, uh, the advanced design competition where the site was under the bridge, students really get a sense of the darkness of that space, the sound of that space, and it's really fascinating to see the way in which student ideas grew from areas which I wasn't expecting, yeah. right? Yeah, I would say along with uh, having fun is just remembering the concept is the broad picture and that that really informs everything else. So not to get too hung up on the details, although some details can really sell a project. So to kind of have a balance between when you start, when you have your idea, when it kind of transforms and picks on a different scale, to always have them relate back to each other. I think um, those were strongest in these projects. Four of us just had some really great drawings. Um, we thought that uh, the initial bubble diagram was pretty sensible to the idea of the site and then translated very successfully into some great um, both computer generated and hand ge generated drawings. Um, the idea here would be that there's this dome that lights up and that way the area can stay lit even at nighttime. And just a careful attention to lifting up roofs to allow for light to come in. I would assume there would probably be a glass roof underneath some sort of Sky, um, skylight. I really enjoy how much research this, this uh, student had um, done in, um, and also showed us in the evidence of that research. So um, what I really enjoy about that, I mean two boards are just dedicated just by wrestling with the idea of well, wrestling with um, the program and um, uh, difficulties of the, of the site and the opportunities that these difficulties provide. Uh, open up. So, um, I, and I really, that really attracted us to, and immediately got us, got our attention um, for this project. One of the few that really coped with the structure of the bridge and uh, right. really in, a, in several areas, in the cross section and so forth, which is dealing with the element. And I like the idea of raising uh, the living in its above and open space below. Right, what we noticed about that is they even went so far as the bridges connecting those units are purposefully planned so the programmed plaza space is actually double height. It's not being closed up by the circulation paths. I mean, just very well thought out. So Luminosity um, really started out with uh, this student commenting on how they didn't really know how to begin and they just found something they loved. They were taking a ceramics class and they said, you know, this, this shape, this form, the aesthetic beauty really got to them. And so they started out with that as the concept of beauty and form. And so they started out with that, with the unit develop. You see some sketches development, some diagrams of where it might sit. And then you start to go lower and you, you kind of see this village of, uh, you know, pots where people live inside, um, and then it kind of turns to a more development kind of uh, arrangement. Um, but the unit is very unique. Um, the way it sits on site, I think, is very interesting. Um, we, just, we just thought it was uh, very strong in the effect you kind of feel out of it versus some projects where it's more logical and I have the program here and this and that and this is more the feeling of the site. Just to think about what, if you don't know where to be in, what do you like? Are you into hiking? Are you into pottery? Are you into um, uh, snow ski? Or just think about that and if this 
you have to love it, right? So the, and then it, if you love it enough, it will propel and it will evolve into something, right? And if you start something you don't love, the project has no end. So I think that's this really interesting way of seeing how something that they love, pottery or that form, can take up whimsical, can change scale and become like a whimsical village. Mm -hmm. I think this project is quite fun. Yeah. We're trying to reach the light. This project counterintuitively puts everything in the dark area, bringing the light to it. And the color scheme is respectful of that to some degree. And so that openness, and it's well, it's well presented in that uh, 3D rendering as to how that would work. I, I, I'll come in first. I, I think the, the thing that attracted me about that project was the, the direct attempt to try to bring light under the bridge. Um, that, it, that it used light as almost another architectural element. And in, in studio at, at KSU, we talk about this all the time. How can, we, how can we take the things around us and incorporate them into our designs? And for me, that was, that was the nicest part about that. And really not removing themselves from the bridge, but making sure the bridge was in every rendering, every drawing. Um, very smart. Finds a way to handle a lot of the public space in a way that seems balanced. Um, where a lot of projects might have some exciting public space, but then a lot of public space you can see easily falling into disuse or misuse. Here, they've, they've uh, organized and kind of taken ownership of all that public space. It really turns the, not as much a square as a really an enlarged sidewalk that approaches and you get these pockets off of the sidewalk as you go under this bridge and then they've internalized a lot of it which turns it into a huge living room kind of situation. Um, you can imagine um, uh, that kind of use and how that might be used in, as a shared community space. It opens up opportunities that uh, other projects have touched on in different ways but this one kind of coalesces that I think. Over the years I've seen the competition go from um, students doing really strong drawings um, without much strong ideas behind them because they were learning the tools and that was all that they um, kind of could do. And we were amazed by the drawings that they could produce. And I think this year we're seeing really strong ideas coming forward. Um, and I'm very, very excited that the teachers are really embracing this and supporting this. The kind of sophistication that we're seeing in the schemes could not be possible without the teachers who are behind the scenes. Um, so can we have a round of applause for all the fabulous teachers